There's a lot of different threads in terms of these latest developments. None of them are good for Israel, yeah. Heidi. Um, I mean, the, the, the killing of the soldier with Egypt is really, really, I mean, it's only one individual. When you compare it to the number of people who've died, it's, it's obviously quite minor, but it's significant and it's serious. I mean, Egypt, Egypt was one of the first nations to recognise Israel. They have a peace agreement. They are central to Israel's security. And Egypt has been warning about Rafa the whole time. And this is one of the reasons why Egypt has closed the border as well, is that just it doesn't want this conflict spilling over so it's going to be really quite problematic there but then of course you come to the the, um, the missile that's hit hit this um, basically a, a tent area where um, where Gazan refugees had, had been um, trying to escape the violence and, and that's been hit by a missile so these burning tents and, and charred bodies uh, I mean it's disastrous it's exactly what uh, the US and everybody in the world was warning Israel about that uh, there was a huge risk of going into such a built-up area militants or not um, you know, that they had to be extremely careful or not do it. Um, and the US had said, look, realistically, there's no way you can do this. And what we're seeing is that's probably about right. Will Israel stop? It seems highly unlikely to, though. That's what I'm wondering about, Michael. Where's sort of the red line here, do you think, for Israel? Because we're seeing more governments that are recognising Palestine. There's been a number of states that have made it clear, including the US, that they didn't want to see this type of incursion or event happening in, in Rafah. So what are the, the likely scenarios of where we go from here? It's a good question, Annabelle, and it's, it's, it's difficult to see. I mean, it, in a sense, you can, you can almost feel this uh, increasing isolation of Israel. And I mean, no one's saying I told you so, but it was so obvious beforehand that, you know, you, you're going in um, with heavy artillery, with, with uh, missiles into an area where there's 1.4 million civilians in tents, trying to, trying to find these militants who are, who are in tunnels or, or hiding in the, in the civilian population. This was always going to happen. Uh, will, will it affect Israel or will it affect its relations? I mean, they're so bad at the moment. The, 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 the death of the soldier with Egypt could potentially be really significant. And people are already saying that this may inhibit the, the, um, the efforts to get a, a ceasefire because, I mean, Egypt's obviously been central to that. Uh, but, yeah, Israel looks isolated. And, I mean, the US is always going to stick with Israel, but uh, it seems unlikely that they're going to release these weapons that they'd been delaying and that sort of thing. I mean, wherever possible, the US is going to try to make clear that it's unhappy, but they're not going to, they're not going to desert Israel at the end of the day, and neither is Germany. They're going to be critical, but at the end of the day, these guys will stick with Israel. What does the reconstruction plan even look like? There is no reconstruction plan. I mean, this is this is a this is the the disastrous side of it. And even Israel's defence minister, who sort of um, comes across as one of the more sensible members of that of that government, had had complained publicly that the, every time he tries to raise the subject of a, a post-war scenario, the government shuts it down. And the reason is that you've got this right these um, settler right-wing elements in the Israeli government. They want to bring they want to bring Israeli settlers into that area, etc. And they don't want to be talking about any sort of independence state or Arab presence or anything like that. But that's the only way forward. I mean, you can't have uh, we, uh, Europeans or Americans or anyone in there. You need uh, Arabs, uh, sorry, Muslims, middle, people from the Middle East there. And, and part of that whole idea of um, Israel doing a deal with Saudi Arabia, where Saudi Arabia recognises Israel in return for Israel acknowledging a Palestinian state and getting that all going, that's, that's the ultimate objective that everyone wants uh, in terms of reconstructing Palestine and, and, or, or you know, a Palestinian state and making it viable. But it's just hard to see that Israeli government bring themselves to that, you know, to, to that point where they agree to that.